Hi everyone. Today we're going to be drying this Easter basket and this lesson is going to be uh, geared specifically towards students in Discovery Art at Gift and Art One at Heritage. Um, I know that some of you students who are in Discovery Art at Gift did start this project already. We just didn't get a chance to finish it. So if that's you, moms, in the description of this uh, video, I will put the exact time that you can fast forward and um, get to the part where we left off. Or you can just watch, continue to watch, and it would be a good review anyway. Um, for those students who did start it, hopefully you have this in your sketchbook at home and you can just continue. Uh, if you don't, or you haven't started it yet, like my students in Art One, all you're gonna need is a piece of paper. Hopefully you have your sketchbook, you can use your sketchbook. Uh, you're just gonna need a pencil, uh, maybe a sharpener and an eraser. And um, when we get to the color part of this project, if you have any markers at home, colored pencils would be great. If you don't have colored pencils at home, you can use crayons. So we're just gonna be flexible and use what we have at home. So, okay, let's get started. So what you see here on the board is the basic shape we're gonna start with for the basket. Now I'm gonna erase it and redraw it on the board. And then I'll also draw it in my sketchbook in a minute. But we're gonna start with a big rectangle shape but you'll notice that it has a little bit of a curve to it. So we're gonna draw a slightly curved line and then two straight lines down the sides and then another curved line at the bottom. Now it's not too curvy, it's just a little bit curvy. And then we're gonna draw a big arched line, kind of like a rainbow, but it's gonna go from one side up and all the way to the other. And now I'm gonna draw it in my sketchbook. Okay, so now I'm gonna draw it in my sketchbook. So again, we want a big rectangle shape that's a little bit curved. Again, slightly curved line, not too curvy. It's almost a straight line, it's just a little bit curved. And then two straight lines down the sides and then another curved line at the bottom. And then we're gonna do that big arched line, kind of like a rainbow from one side, reaching up all the way over and coming down. So that's the basic shape of our basket. And now, here's my example of the finished basket. We're gonna try to create this handle. It kind of looks like a braid. Doesn't it remind you of a braid? So we're gonna create that by using some little curved lines. And some of you have worked on the human face with me recently. And when we did the eyes, we talked about the eyes being football or almond shaped. Remember that? So we did a frown and a smile, and we put those together to create this shape. Well, that's the exact same shape we're gonna use on the handle of our basket. So I'm gonna start at one corner and I'm gonna make, if I turn my sketchbook like this, it looks like a smile. See that? And then a frown and a smile and a frown and a smile and a frown. And I'm just gonna keep going all the way around my basket. Now, another way you could do this, because there's not just one way to draw, we can draw different ways. We could also do the whole one, one side like this, and we call this a scalloped line. Some of you might remember that. We could do that all the way around the basket. That might be easier. And then we do the other side. and go all the way around the basket, okay? Now, we still have this line in the middle that we can erase. Um, and we can also, if you really wanted to make it extra fancy, <laughs> we can go over these lines right here 
and kind of connect them almost like uh, it's kind of like a backwards S that we're drawing right now. And I'm pressing a little bit harder with my pencil, you might notice. If you're my student, you know that I always say not to press hard with your pencil, right? But once we have those lines where we want them, then we can press a little bit harder. All right, and then I can go in, like I said, and erase those lines that are in the middle. Now, if you have a pencil that has an eraser on the back, I would just test it out first on a separate sheet of paper and make sure that it doesn't leave any marks on your paper because sometimes, we've talked about that before in class, how erasers can sometimes leave marks on your paper. So just make sure it works really well. And if it does, you can use your, your pencil eraser. Okay, so look, now we have our handle. Now we're gonna create this part. It's kind of, uh, we're kind of making it look like it's weaved. And I'm gonna show you a real basket. Now this has a different kind of weave, but you can see how pretty that is, how it's, how it's uh, weaved together. So we wanna kind of give it that look. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add one slightly curved line right in the middle here. And then we're gonna create these little boxes. So I'm gonna start in this top row and I'm gonna draw, they're a little bit curved. Do you notice how they're a little bit curved? They're not perfectly straight, they're a little bit curved. On the left, I'm gonna curve them this way. On this side, I'm gonna curve them a little bit that way, just a little bit. Now on the bottom, these lines, I'm gonna draw in the center of each box. I know that might be a little confusing, but once you see how I do it, you'll understand. So I'm gonna start in the middle of this box and draw a line. The middle of this box and draw a line. The middle of this box, now I'm gonna curve it a little bit the other way. Middle of this box. Okay, so now I'm done with that. And now I'm gonna add a little bit of what I would call texture lines. And I'm gonna make some long and some short. And I'm going to also take turns drawing them vertical, which is up and down, and then horizontal, which is side to side. So these are gonna be vertical. These are gonna be horizontal. Now notice I'm making some long, some short, some long, some short, maybe some medium. And then again, now I'm gonna switch to horizontal. Long, short. Now you don't have to make a pattern. It doesn't have to be long, short, long, short. You can mix it up. Like here I might do long, short, short, medium, long. <laughs> doesn't have to be in any sort of order. I'm just adding some texture lines. It's really starting to look like a weaved basket now, isn't it? All right, so now we're basically done drawing our basket. So in a minute, I'm gonna show you how to draw your Easter eggs in your basket. But for now, I want to show you some examples of patterns that you can do on your Easter eggs. Of course, there's a lot of different patterns you can do. And we've talked about patterns in class before, but uh, let me just go over some. So we of course can do stripes. And if our egg is curved, then our stripes will be a little bit curved. So let me show you what that would look like. If I have an egg like this and I'm gonna draw some stripes, they might be a little bit curved like that. See how those lines are a little bit curved? Uh, now we can add something inside our stripes. Like we could add a zigzag 
pattern up and down and up and down in between each stripe like this. Whoops. Let me go back to my other marker. We could do something like that. We could do circles. Circles is one of my favorite patterns. Sometimes I do big circles, little circles, medium circles, and I just mix it up. So again, if we have an egg, we might just put our circles on there. That could be a fun pattern. Okay, another pattern would be that scalloped line that we talked about when we were doing the braided handle of the basket. You could do a scalloped line like this. And usually when I do a scallop line, I start in the middle. See how I'm starting there in the middle of my next line? And it kind of looks like fish scales or mermaid scales or dragon scales. Again, if my egg is curved, I can do them this way or I can do them this way. We're drawing it to make it look like our egg is laying down in our basket, like that. What are some other patterns we could do? Well, we could just do polka dots. That might be fun. Or we can do swirls. Here's some swirls. So there's all kinds of patterns you can do and try combining them. So maybe you do some scallop lines or some mermaid scales and then you switch to stripes and then you go back to mermaid scales so you can mix it up and do lots of fun patterns okay so now we're going to start to draw the eggs that are in our basket and i just did three big eggs if you want to try to make more than three or you want to make your eggs a little bit smaller so you can fit more than three, that's fine. In fact, maybe I'll do an example of that now. So we're just gonna use some curved uh, lines. I'm sure you remember what the shape of an egg is. It's kind of like an oval, but it's a little bit maybe fatter on one side and skinnier on the other, okay? But we probably wouldn't see the whole egg since it's sitting inside our basket. We would only see part of the shape of the egg. So I'm just gonna use some curved lines like this. So there's two eggs. Here's a third egg. Maybe I have one egg that's kind of sitting up like that. And maybe I'll have one more peeking out over there. So now I have five eggs showing. So you don't have to do just three. If you wanna make four or five eggs, that's fine. That way you have more fun drawing patterns. And now I can have fun drawing patterns. Again, we can do stripes. And notice how I'm making them curved lines. I can do some fun things inside the stripes. And I'm gonna mix it up. So here I'm gonna do circles. Now, when you get to the edge of your egg, you might wanna just draw a half a circle, a little curved line like that. And that makes it look like the pattern continues on the egg where you can't see. On this one, here's a pattern I didn't do yet. How about wavy lines, wavy lines? There's a fun pattern, wavy lines. And this one, I'm gonna do stripes this way. Since my egg is kind of sitting up, I'm gonna do like curved lines this way, like a smile. And maybe over here, I'm gonna do swirls. Okay, now I'm gonna do kind of like a half a swirl. There we go. So now my eggs all have patterns. Now we're gonna add a little bit of grass. Usually Easter baskets have a little bit of Easter grass in them and you can try to make it look like real grass or the Easter grass. Um, you can just add some curved lines coming out like this if you want or in my first example I, 
I actually turned it into kind of a shape like this, where I did the other side of the blade of grass, if that makes sense. You can put a little bit right here. And I overlapped my egg a little bit with grass, so now I can go back in and erase what's inside there. I'm gonna erase this. Okay, so my Easter basket is now done and I am ready for color. Now at this point, if you have markers at home, great. Uh, if you don't, don't worry about it. You can just use colored pencil or crayon. But if you do have marker, and in fact, if you're in my discovery art class, you probably already started outlining your basket because that's what we did uh, the last time we had class together. So what we did is we just traced over our pencil lines and you can use any kind of marker. In class, we usually use Sharpies and we, we've talked about the rules for Sharpies um, to be very careful with them and to not draw on our skin and not draw on the table. We're just always very careful about Sharpies, right? You might have Crayola markers at home You might have another kind of marker at home. But whatever kind of marker you have will work fine. So you'll notice that I'm just tracing over all my pencil lines. And this might take you a while. I'm going pretty fast. You might not be able to go as fast as I am, but that's okay. Now, you notice I'm adding a couple extra lines in there that I didn't have with my pencil. And that's fine. If you decide you wanna add an extra couple lines in there, feel free to do that. So there, I just added a couple more lines and I'm tracing all my pencil lines. Now, usually when we're done outlining all our pencil lines. We talk about cleaning up our artwork a little bit. And what I mean by that is going ahead and erasing any extra pencil lines that you don't need now, that might be still showing after you outlined everything with your marker. Now I'm gonna start outlining my braided handle. Now, you can kind of see what I mean by that backwards S. An S might look like this, right? That's an S, like a tall skinny S. This is just kind of backwards. Now, if that's a little too hard for you, that's okay. You can just go back to what we talked about in the beginning, which is just the scallop line or the frown and the smile. And we're just outlining the braided handle. Again, I'm going pretty fast. You may need to pause this video for just a minute so that you have extra time to outline, um, which is fine. Just put it on pause and come back when you're done. Okay, so now I'm gonna start outlining my eggs. Again, if you don't have markers at home, you can just do this with colored pencil or crayon. Uh, if you do have markers, any kind of markers are fine. Um, and any colors are fine. Most of the colors I used in my eggs though are pastel colors. And those are the colors we often see in springtime and at Easter. And pastel colors are colors that have been lightened a little bit with white. So red, if you add white to it, it becomes pink, right? So pink, especially soft pink, is a pastel. Or green, you can see that this green is a very light, soft green. We might call it a mint green. That also is a pastel. 
So if you want to use some pastel colors, great, but you don't have to. You can also use bright primary colors, and we know what the primary colors are, right? The primary colors are yellow, red, and blue. So anyway, I'm going to start outlining my eggs, and I'm going to outline my patterns too. And that way, everything just stands out a little bit more, a little bit better. I'm gonna do this one with some purple too, but I'm not gonna do all my stripes in purple. I'm just gonna do a couple of them and I'm skipping over that blade of grass and I'm gonna switch to maybe pink. Okay, maybe I'll do this one pink. And that top stripe's gonna be pink, but maybe I'll switch to orange. This is kind of a light orange. Or maybe I'll use, look at this pretty color. And maybe I'll do some of my circles in this pretty blue color. So we're just mixing it up. Did you notice I just added a little extra circle there? How about some green? So I'm gonna do this. And since this is gonna take a while, what I'm gonna do in a minute is I'm gonna just start fast forwarding. So you'll see me coloring and outlining, but it's gonna go really fast. And you can watch it. And then if you want, you can pause the video and then you can work on outlining and coloring. and our grass all colored. Um, we're gonna start to color our basket, but I just wanted to point something out to you. Do you notice that in some of these squares, it looks a little bit darker? That's because I used two different colored pencils. Hopefully you have some color colored pencils. If you don't, it's okay. You can use crayons. Um, if you do have colored pencils, these are just Crayola. I'm gonna use tan for most of the basket, and then I'm gonna use a little of the light brown on top of it. So let me show you what I mean. I'm gonna start coloring inside the squares, and I'm going pretty fast, just so this doesn't take too long. But you guys, again, you can pause the video, and you can color on your own and then come back to it when you're done coloring. But, uh, so I've colored two squares with the tan and then I'm gonna take this light brown and I'm gonna add a little light brown maybe to every other square right on top right on top of the tan. So when I do this one and this one, I'm gonna add a little bit light brown on top of it. And that way, now these colors are a little different than the colors I used in here, but um, just to give it a little bit of variety in the, in the color, so it's not just all one color. So what I'm gonna do now is fast forward the video and while I color my basket, and you can watch it in fast motion.
Okay, so I don't know if you noticed, but while I was coloring my basket, I did have to sharpen my pencil quite a few times because uh, it is a lot of coloring. So you uh, will probably need your, your, your pencil sharpener. And um, also I wanted to mention that you don't want to press hard, not too hard when you're coloring in your basket because if you do, your hand's gonna get tired and then you're not gonna wanna finish coloring. <laughs> so um, try not to press too hard and you have to shake your hand out a little bit and take a break every now and then, that's fine. The last thing we're gonna do on our, on our picture is we're gonna add a little bit of background. And you'll notice on mine, this is one of my favorite backgrounds. I do just a little, um, a set of three dots. That's one of my favorites. Now, you can do your own background if you wanna put little hearts or um, something like that, it's fine. But we don't wanna do something, we don't wanna do anything too crazy in the background because we don't want it to distract from our basket. We want the basket and the Easter eggs to be the main thing that people notice and look at. So if we do something too crazy in the background, uh, it will be distracting. People will look at the background rather than our basket and our eggs. So I'm just gonna stick with one light color like pink, and I'm just gonna do these little three dots. One, two, three, one, two, three. And I put a lot of space in between. So how I'm putting lots of space in between? Lots of space. So I have some in the middle. Now I'm gonna do some on the outside. One, two, three, one, two, three. And again, if you have markers, great. If you don't, you can do it with colored pencil. If you don't have colored pencil, you can do it with crayon. And we're just gonna use whatever we have at home to create a colorful, fun Easter basket. All right, so I'm adding my little background pattern. Again, it's very simple and it's not distracting at all. And the very, very, very last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sign my picture. I always sign my artwork and if you don't wanna sign it, you don't have to, but I usually sign down in the corner so you can use a marker or a pencil. That's how I sign mine. If you just wanna put your first name or your initials, you can do that. Or if you don't wanna sign it at all, that's fine too. So hopefully you had fun making the Easter basket. I know I had fun. And if you like this video, uh, please like it and share it with your friends and you can subscribe. I will be doing more videos like this. Um, I do also teach all the way through high school level art. So I will be doing videos for all my different level classes. Again, this one is geared towards discovery art at GIFT and Art One at Heritage, or if you're not familiar with those groups, um, basically geared to six, seven, and eight-year-olds. Um, I hope you enjoyed it and take care.